Hi and welcome back. I hope you've got a good break and are ready to learn more about chassis. We've talked about the three main components of a chassis assessment. We're now in part three, and in this video, we're going to learn how to perform document check. When you're at the site, ask for documented information and records that prove conformity of the OSH management system and activities as given in the checklist. The document checklist can be found in Annex A, which is on page 9. And you should read this together with the assessor guide given in Annex D, on page 22. You may want to pause this video now and flip through the pages I just mentioned. Have a good look at them and come back to this video when you're ready to continue. There are 57 items grouped into 14 elements in the document checklist. You'll be checking against the checklist to see whether they are compliant, non-compliant, or totally not applicable. Let's go through the checklist together. First in the list, element A, Rojak OSH policy. If the organization has not more than five employees, just mark all items in this element as not applicable. Easy, isn't it? But remember, I'll have to stress this again. Mark all items under element A as not applicable only when the project has not more than five employees. A project with more than five employees must have a project OSH policy. On the other hand, under Occupational Safety and Health Act, Section 30, if there are more than 40 employees, the project needs to also have a safety committee in place. If this section applies, proceed with checking if there is a written project OSH policy statement. Please refer to page 22 to 30 of CIS 10 for the assessor guide. Tick C for compliance if the project OSH policy statement is available. Next thing to check if the project OSH policy statement is available is whether the SHC has conducted a review to ensure suitability of the policy statement. In other words, you should check if the policy statement has been reviewed regularly by the SHC or if there were any recommendations made to the employers to ensure that the policy remains relevant and appropriate. Tick non-compliance if there is no evidence of such policy review or updates. Next, check if there's a written OSH policy in both Bahasa Malaysia and English. and if it's already signed by the top management and dated. Obtain documented evidence that the Project OSH policy was communicated to all workers on site. Element B, Hazard Identification, Risk Assessment and Risk Control. 
ask for a documented action plan which is approved by the project top management in relation to HIRAC. If it's available, check to see if there have been regular reviews done by the SHC and updates made to them. So far so good? We've just covered the most basic documents to check. Let's see what else is in the checklist. Next in element C, we need to inspect and make sure all legal requirements and other requirements action plan are documented. We do this by verifying the legal register and ensuring that it contains the minimum list of law and regulations stated in Annex D. Tick non-compliance if there's no such action plan or if the action plan does not meet the minimum list. Check and assess through and make sure an updated legal compliance checklist is in order. Ask for the CIDB registration certificate. Note that in the Assessor Guide, CIDB Act 520, Amendment 2011, Section 25 mentioned here refers to the registration of contractors. Check if all construction personnel are registered with CIDB and that each of them is holding a valid CIDB personnel registration card. The main contractor should have an employee register, list or a logbook on CIDB personnel registration card records and should have declared and submitted the awarded contract to CIDB. Next, check if the project site is registered with DOSH by citing form JKJ103. Element D is where we do a quick check on whether the OSH objectives are being evaluated from time to time. The compliance may be evidenced by reports and action plans on OSH that are approved by project top management. If these objectives are integrated into other work activities or procurement process, they should be reflected in the project OSH plan as well as management and work procedures. We're done with the first four elements of document check. If you're still awake, let's move on. Otherwise, pause me and get a cup of coffee. Element E, OSH Rules and Responsibilities. We start the document check by assessing whether the OSH Rules and Responsibilities of all project personnel are documented. These are usually evidenced by the project organization chart and spelled in the project OSH plan or employee job description records. Next, verify whether the roles and responsibilities of all project personnel is communicated to them. This can be confirmed by checking whether the OSH responsibilities are incorporated in safety induction minutes, training model minutes, toolbox meeting minutes, or signed off evidence. Check whether the Project Safety and Health Committee is established 
in accordance with OSH SHC 1996 regulations by verifying the project organization chart, committee organization chart, minutes of meeting, and meeting attendance name list and appointment letter. From the organization chart, check if a site safety supervisor or triple S has been appointed and if so, check for the record of the triple S registration with DOSH. Here, a designated person shall be assigned to each high-risk work activity at the construction site. The nine high-risk activities include hoisting, scaffolding, welding, confined space, crane operator, excavation works, demolition works, piling works and rigor or lifting works. It is a legal requirement and is stated in the Factories and Machinery BOAC Regulation 1986. The final question in element E only applies to the project if the contract sum is 20 million ringgit or more. This is because under OSHA 1994, it's mandatory for a project with a contract sum of 20 million ringgit or more to engage a safety and health officer. If this applies, check to ensure that the safety and health officer is in the organization chart and view the record of the SHO registration with DOSH. In element F, we assess the safety and health competence training and awareness provided to the employees. First, check the competent employees register, logbook or name list. Verify that OSH induction training has been conducted by examining the training records and their OSH induction training program. Ask to view OSH training need analysis documents to ensure that the necessary competency and training required for employees have been identified. Ensure that there is an action plan for competency, training and compliance. and that the requirements and competencies, training and awareness have been made known to the employees through induction, training, letter or memos or other forms of instruction. We're about halfway done with document check. There are quite a number of elements more to cover, so sit up straight and here we go. Element G focuses on communication, participation and consultation. The employer needs to prove that matters relating to the OSH management system has been communicated to the employees and that there are employees' participation and consultation. Ask for minutes of meetings, letter, memo directive, action plan on communication or other written documents to support this assertion. From those documents, you can also ascertain whether the Project Safety and Health Committee has been established and meetings have been conducted on a monthly basis, and whether the Project Safety and Health Committee is involved in the improvement of the OSH management system. Element H is about assessing how well a site has been keeping its OSH documentation. First, there has to be a written directive for creating and updating documented information. Next, check if there's a register or log for all available documented information in the OSH management system. And that there's an action plan for the storage, protection, retrieval, retention and disposal of records. Mark non-compliance if there's no such action plan. By now, I hope you've gotten a hang of document check. If you feel you need to repeat this video, please do so. Otherwise, there are more elements in the checklist. Let's move on. Element I focuses on operational planning and control. 
there should be documents on hazard elimination and risk reduction using hierarchy of control. The HIRAC, JSA or other risk assessment and risk control documents should contain control measures governed by a hierarchy of control or a combination of such controls. Additionally, there should be safe work procedure, safe work instruction or safe operation procedure for three high-risk work activities determined by Shasik Assessor. We'll learn more about selecting these high-risk activities in Part 4, when we'll learn about workplace inspection. For now, just remember that the contractor has to produce the SWP, SWI or SOP for each of the high-risk activities to earn a tick for compliance here. Lastly, determine if there is an action plan on controlling temporary or permanent changes of work processes, such as those related to changes in work technology, equipment, facilities, work practices or procedures, design specification, raw materials, staffing, standard or regulations. Element J is where we assess documentation relating to emergency preparedness and response. There should be documentation on anticipated emergency situation identification and initial evaluation. Ensure that there is a Project Emergency Response Plan established, implemented and maintained. Verify that the Emergency Response Team is established and trained by going through the ERT training records. Well done! It's an achievement that you've gotten so far in the checklist. If I can hug you now, I would. We've got a few more elements to go, so come on, let's do it! In element K, we assess the OSH performance measurement and monitoring documentation. First, cite the action plan developed to monitor, measure, analyze and evaluate OSH performance. If those documents are available, ensure that they have been reviewed by the top management of the project. On top of that, determine if there is an action plan to evaluate legal and other requirements for compliance gaps. Next, in element L, the focus is on the documentation of incidents, non-conformities and corrective actions. There should be an action plan to determine and manage incidents and non-conformities. And there should be records, a logbook or register of incidents, non-conformity, and corrective action updated and maintained at the site. All right, mate. We're almost done with document check. Just two more elements to go. Ready? Element M is where we determine whether there is an effective internal audit program in place. First, is to ascertain if an action plan for internal audit program has been established, implemented and maintained. The audit plan should include details such as frequency, methods, responsibilities, consultation, reporting and auditor selection. The site management should be able to produce a DOSH site visit or inspection logbook. Besides that, ascertain that the audit report has been sent to the relevant managers for further action by referring to audit report transmittal, memos, letters or other relevant documents. In connection with incidents and non-conformity reported, ask for documentation of the action taken to address them and any steps taken for continual improvement. Take non-compliance if none such documents are produced or if the documents are inadequate. 
Element N covers documentation relating to construction work activities. First, records on temporary structures should be checked and approved prior to use. Safe work procedures document has been prepared and approved by the consultant or project manager prior to site mobilization. If machines are found on the site, verify the validity of the original PMA and PMT certificates and ensure that they are visibly displayed on or at the respective machines. Additionally, look for warning or safety notice or tagging on the machinery made during maintenance and servicing. If a project involves clearing of a bush, removal of topsoil or felling of trees, verify that the approval has been obtained from the local authorities. Where a project involves the erection of hoarding, confirm the availability of safe work procedures for the erection of the hoarding and observe if the condition of the hoarding is maintained as per stated in the SWP, based on approved drawings. <music> Lastly, check if there are records on fogging activities carried out at the site and request for the fogging schedule and reports. Now that you've assessed all the 57 items in the document checklist, it's time to total up the items and calculate the score. Count the total of ticks in each column. Document check has a total of 57 items. So double check that the total adds up to 57. Here's the formula to calculate the total chassis score for document check. The formula comes from page 7 of the CIS. All you have to do is to plug in the total number of compliances obtained from the completed checklist just now. Then plug in the total number of non-applicable checklist items. Note that 20% here is the weightage assigned to document check. And 57 here refers to the total number of items in the document checklist. Perform the calculations to obtain the total chassis score for document check. Remember this table from part 1? The maximum score for document check is 20%. And the score we obtained just now was 18.9%. Looks good! But do note that this is not the final chassis score yet, because we need to add this score with scores obtained from workplace inspection and personnel interview to arrive at the overall chassis score, which eventually determines the star ranking. That's all there is to document check. I suggest you take a break and reread the pages on document check in the CIS to understand it thoroughly before you move on to the next part of the video. See you soon!